For the first time since winning the Zolder feature race back in Season 8, Renee Osterkamp does not sit atop the AOR Formula Renault 2.0 Driver Championship. That's an impressive string of 31 consecutive races leading the points. With the two-time champion return to his familiar rank to start a new streak, will his teammate and new points leader Patrick Kessler find enough success this afternoon to start his own string atop the standings, or will another name break the Sim RC stranglehold? Find out soon as the Global Sim Racing Channel brings you live as it happens round five coverage of Apex Online Racing's Formula Renault 2.0 Season 10 Championship from the Suzuka International Racing Course. Konnichiwa everyone and welcome to GSRC's Countdown to Green as cyberspace flows into your place over these 15 streamy award-worthy minutes. GSRC will bring you all the storylines, all the stats and facts you'll need to fully appreciate not the usual double header format, but a rare for this series single race event. All the Formula Renault action from Green Flag to Victory Donuts will immediately follow as we count down to Green here at Suzuka for the fifth round of the AOR Formula Renault 2.0 Season 10 Championship. And here to do all of that is yours truly, Bill Soupzon, blessed to be joined way up in the press box to bring you our words eye view by Joe Peak. Taking a turn in the director's chair is Sean Crackers Ambrose, armed with cameras located aimed, zoomed, and focused by GSRC's camera guru, Dougie Beard. Some call it the origami pretzel, and Joe, this place can put a knot in the belly of an unprepared driver. And preparedness will be everything, Bill. This is one of those circuits that's often described as a driver's track. And even though the setup can make a difference, you'll quickly be able to see the difference between those who practiced and those who haven't. This is a very technical racetrack with 17 turns dispersed among nearly six kilometers. It's a little over three and a half miles for those of us in the States. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies that you can gain or even lose time. But in spite of that, this is also a very fast track. The Formula Renaults are flat out for a pretty good portion of the lap. The good news is there's a couple good braking zones where you can get passes done, such as the hairpin or the Casio triangle. There's also some really sketches, pla sketchy places you'll see drivers enticed into risky situations, like turns one and two or the Degner curves. Honestly, after over 50 years of racing, there's very few race fans who don't know about this track, but just in case any of our fans haven't experienced this place before, let's get a look at it from the driver's perspective with our GSRC lap guide. All right, we've got Scott Newton in the GSRC Formula Renault 2.0, so let's do a lap around Suzuka. Coming down to turn one, even though you're likely to see passes here, it's going to be hairy on the entry. You're braking and turning at the same time, which means drivers will be on the limit and will make too wide rather risky. Turn two is basically an extension of turn one, but you'll use that banking to swing the car down and around, carrying your speed. Bringing the car across the track, we head into the S's. These bends get longer and longer as they go, slowing the car with each one. Try to set up for each successive corner instead of drifting wide at the exit. The final right-hander can be especially tricky since it tightens towards the end. Once you come out of the last one, you've hit Dunlop, but in the Renault, it's easily flat out. Hug the left side of the track to shorten it up and set yourself up for Degner 1. A stab of the brakes and a flick of the wheel will take you clattering across the curb at a high rate of knots. Then before you know it, you've got to slow much more for Degner 2. Tucking it way down to the apex will be critical through here. After you head under the bridge, you then approach the hairpin. The kinked entry can make it tough to predict whether a driver will stay defensive, and that sometimes causes race-ending wrecks under braking. Like most hairpins, just square off the exit of this baby for the best possible launch. And you'll really need it because the long turn 12 is essentially a straight in this car. Keep your foot to the floor and hug the inside. The draft might help just enough here to offer you an opportunity to overtake into Spoon, but this double apexer has a quick entry for the first half. You let the car drift out and slow it down some more for the second apex. The exit off of here is going to be one of the most important ones of the course. Hesitate to get on the power and you'll regret it on the long climb up the backstream. This is another spot where the slipstream will make battles erupt often, but once again, going too wide will really separate the brave from the fate of heart. Going through 130R side by side will frazzle nearly everyone's nerves. 
Then you've got an excellent opportunity to outbreak your opponent into the Casio Triangle. But like Scott shows, it's going to be easy to come in here too hot. Keep the car steady over the curb so that you can get your foot to the power confidently. The final turn is an easy, gentle bend. Bring the car across to the racing line, and if you kept it all together, you've now finished a lap around Suzuka. A lap around the origami pretzel, more officially and commonly known as Suzuka International Racing Course. All right, look, we touched on it in the opening. That is Rene Osterkamp's fall from the top of the standings. To see exactly how that happened, here's Joe with the best of day results from Phillip Island. Yeah, and as we take a look at that, you can see Manuel Hoyer, Hoyer has actually managed to get the highest best today score that uh, any driver has gotten this season, 51 points. Uh, now, those who are familiar knowing that uh, 52 is the most you can get, well, that's due to actually three bonus points uh, because he had first in the sprint and second in the feature. Uh, now, Glenn Key could not manage to get uh, a win uh, with just getting a uh, top five uh, after he got the win in the feature. And he had to settle for eighth place in the sprint. Still not too bad. Uh, Kerry Nolden had a personal best this season in that as well. Uh, taking a look at, at Kessler, the reason that he's jumped up uh, is uh, he had 38 points. But weirdly, that was his worst score this season. So just generally, that team did not do well uh, that race. Uh, Connor Ryan had an AOR career best as well. You can see he uh, had a, a top 10 in both races, and Rene Osterkamp only managed five points, uh, hence why he fell lower than Kessler, despite Kessler's bad performance. Uh, now, the thing that we really need to know, though, is the championship situation. What does that do, Soup, to uh, the driver's points? Yeah, so let's go ahead. The uh, Osterkamp's teammate, Patrick Kessler, jumps up there. So I'm a little disappointed because after 31 races with Rene Osterkamp at the top of the chart, in an effort to keep this segment fresh, I had worked out this cool interpreted dance routine that I was going to do to explain the points. But with Kessler changing things up and keeping it fresh, I'll put that on the table. We'll use it a little bit later. Now, the AOR Orange Phil Reed holds station behind the two Sim RC drivers. The big news and the big mover was Positive Sim Racing Green, the driver Manuel Hoyer, and Glenn Key. Keep in mind that Hoyer sits fourth in the points despite missing the first two races. The GSRC Stat Boys will start uh, easing in drop races starting next round. So look for the Austrian to close the gap to the lead. And Key, and Key also, he's only a point behind his teammate in fifth. Let's go ahead and look at the team championship now, now where Kerry Nolden finally had a good day for Team AOR Orange. Couple that with Phil Reed result and Team AOR Orange knocked 20 points off the margin to the leaders. Sim RC powered by Rene Osterkamp and Patrick Kessler. Joe showed you about Manuel Hoyer and Glenn Key going 1-2 in the best of day chart, so no surprise to see that team up two places with a bullet. Charlie Summers and Daniel Morris hold station in fourth for Team AOR Blue. And Australia was not kind to the drivers from Russia and the Czech Republic as positive sim racing orange Alexis Sorokin and uh, uh, Lubomir Morris <laughs> fell two places down into fifth. <laughs> a little bit, pull the curtain back, spell check chains Lubomir's first name to Lobster. That's why I'm chuckling down there. <laughs> that might be his new nickname. Okay, uh, long time viewers of GSRC, you think you know what's going on here in an AOR event. Hey, better pay attention, Joe, because things are a little different today. Yep, this is the first time we're getting to cover one of their 60-minute events, so just one race that we're doing. Uh, this is round five here in this 12-round season, and they do get three drop weeks out of this. So you can have a few bad races, but keep in mind, you don't want to uh, have to waste that too early and put yourself under the gun late in the season. It is open setup out there, and, and I said at the top of the race, the setup does make a difference out here, so drivers will uh, need to tweak these things to try and find the ultimate speed to really be up at the top, but uh, uh, you will have to practice regardless of your setup. Now, there are no fast repairs now in this series. As Bill likes to say, you break it, you bought it, and uh, this track does have some runoff having been modernized a little bit, but there's also some places where there's very little space between the track and the barrier where it collects you. Now, uh, 
for today's race specifically, why don't we look at the race details? Uh, as we mentioned, uh, this is a 60 minute race. And because of that, uh, you can expect one pit stop. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, with this being the only race, they're not reversing the grid based on anything. This is based on qualifying only, which is happening right now. There is a 17 incident limit to keep uh, people out of too much trouble and keep them from abusing track limits. Uh, and uh, you can see a win, as we mentioned earlier, will get you 52 points. That pays down to 20th position here in this race. There is a lot to fight for. And uh, the thing about this, Bill, only one race means if you screw it up, you can't bounce back in the second one. You sure can't. Uh, when I'm working with uh, Crackers, he always reminds me when I say, well, his day is done. Well, that's not always the case in these feature races. They have the sprint to go back on. But not today. And, you know, you talked about they have a lot to race for. You saw their 52 points to the winner. Keep in mind that you saw Manuel Hoyer. He scored 51 points. That was the best of day score so far. So right away, the winner of this race is going to get 52, not even counting the bonus points. So, yes, this is, uh, this is big points out there right now. You want to do well today. You know, the AOR has a great weatherman because they, they tell what the weather is going to be on Thursday. And sure enough, uh, the next day when it rolls around, it's exactly what it should be. Let's take a look at that now, Joe. What do you think? Well, 81 degrees track temperature is pretty ideal. These guys will be enjoying that. That means there will be a lot of grip. It makes me feel better because in my practice laps, I was not very close to their times. Uh, so I had a much hotter track, and uh, I'm going to use that as an excuse. Uh, air temperature at 70 degrees. Beautiful day out in Japan. I'm sure the fans, the virtual fans are loving that. There's a little bit of wind, and, and these cars are susceptible to wind, Bill, uh, with those big wings. Uh, so when you get a crosswind, it's something to keep track of. Now, the good news is uh, that the wind will stay consistent, so they're not going to be caught out by gusts like you can be in the real world or with it shifting around on them. Uh, but uh, again, that comes down to practice, knowing where the car is going to get a little uh, unhinged uh, because of that wind and not too humid. So again, helping the speed out there, which right now looking very good for Renee Osterkamp, uh, judging by the qualifying times. I, I've, I've raced a lot in the little MX-5s. So I know where the passing zones are there. Is it pretty much a carry over to these faster cars? Uh, it's mostly the same. Now, the big difference is going to be the breaking down into one and two. Uh, because these cars have quite a bit of downforce, Bill, you're basically, at least for me, I, maybe it's even farther for the fast guys here, but uh, I was just kind of lifting a little bit as you start coming through turn one, and then just after you get through that apex, you start easing onto the brakes, trail braking since you're turning. Uh, so for a passing opportunity, it's going to take basically a really good run and getting yourself fully side by side and hoping that the guy next to you backs out because you're not going to really be able to outbreak someone easily. It's going to be very, very difficult to try and, and tussle with someone through there. Um, but other than that, you know, like I said in the intro, you've got places uh, such as the Hairpin, which is very, very popular. You've got the Casio Triangle. The Spoon, again, because of the downforce, not very much braking there. So I wouldn't expect too many passes, but it's pretty long, flat-out section. So uh, it'll be similar to one and two where you could see drivers get a bit of a draft and maybe try to pull up alongside. Pit stops always play a factor here. How's pit entrance, pit exit? Well, pit entrance isn't too complicated, but we've seen before what we like to call the uh, Austin Powers moment. Uh, there's walls on either side. Uh, there we see that pit entrance there on, on to the right side. You don't use that that early one before the chicane. Right there where, he's going, uh, where Alex is going by is where you'll pull in. But you can see the walls are very close. If you get turned for whatever weird reason, uh, you're kind of stuck, and you could cause a blockage if you have other drivers trying to pit behind you because uh, it could take a while to try to get turned around. Pit exit, eh, it's not too much of a big deal. Really, the thing you need to watch is if anybody is coming up behind you with speed down into turn one because you're, you're simply, essentially dumped right into that fast corner, and that can cause some trouble if you're not watching out. There's some RC guys sitting right up on top again. So I think with qualifying just about done and a standing start and a fairly large field here, we can go ahead and get to our grid whenever our director says it's okay. 31 drivers were able to put in qualifying times. Four did not. We'll see if they're going to race with us. On the front, 
It is the Sim RC boys. It's Renee Osterkamp and Patrick Kessler. Road two is going to be filled up with Stefan Herman and Manuel Hoyer. Hoyer coming off that great day last time. Luke Barden and Kerry Nolden fill up row three. Newcomer Alex Sadler is in the seventh position. He's going to be inside of Glenn Key. He's fast. Josh Thompson in ninth. Rounding out your top ten, Phil Reed. Joe? Alexi Sorokin is going to be starting in 11th, and following him is Daniel Morris in 12th. And row seven has Connor Ryan 13th and Lubomir Morris in 14th. Scott Newton starts P15, followed by Jason Plato in 16th spot. The next row in row nine is Alistair Hay, Ali Hay, I should say, in 17th. Evan Emray in 18th, and Urka Lindstrom in 19th. Rounding out our top 20 is going to be Jiri Mojak. In blackjack is Nicholas uh, Stewart. Dominic Gatermeyer had a win in a sprint race earlier this season, sits in the double duck spot. Tom Ben Hoyman and David Butlar in the 24th position. David hailing out of France, but he spent his early years in uh, as a Dutchman. Ryan Walker and Matteo Coppola in 25th and 26th. Joseph Ringrose and Jordan Pierce fill up the next row after there. Sara Dove way back in 29th. She's going to be inside of Adam Hedgecock. John Roberts, Charlie Summers back in 32nd, didn't put in a qualifying time. James McRitchie, Balateri Alander in 34th, and Thomas Edwards round out your 35 cars on the entry list. All right, our focus though is order has been restored as it's the Sim RC boys up front again in their kind of yellow and black Swiss cheese colored cars. They're sitting one, two. Stefan Herman in a similarly painted car races for Sim RC Retro, the sister team. So those Sim RC guys are great up front with the first three. Manuel Hoyer, after coming off that big day, sits in fourth. You can hear those engines start to harmonize. You know what to do. Gather up the chickens, take cover behind the cows because the horses are out of the barn. And look at Osterkamp squeezing Kessler. Does not want to let Kessler have that spot. Ducking up on the inside as they work through one and two. Hoyer trying to get that third position. He's going to hang on to third right now. No, I think Hoyer's going to, or Herman's going to hang on to that one. Rounding out your top five, it's Luke Barton. Yeah, pretty clean through the start. I'm checking through the field to see if we had any troubles, and I'm not really seeing anybody with issues. Great to see. There was someone blinking. Uh, Daniel Morris, it looks like, and he's in very close quarters, so that's not going to be fun for the drivers around him. They are single file now as the leaders head into both the Degners. Osterkamp manages it well. Let's see what happens, Joe. This is going to be pretty single file from here. Where the action usually happens is when they head down into the hairpin. The leaders yeah, are getting there now. Here they come. Accordion in together. And the other trouble here is not just, oh, and we do have an incident. It looks like um, Lubomir Morris involved in that and a few other cars. Ali Hay involved in it. We'll have a bookmark. We'll come back and look at that one a little bit later. Oh, there was about four cars. Also, Evan Emre involved in it. Sardove, Boudelar, yep. Stewart. Oh, yeah, there was a bunch. And Sorry, what I was without a nose cone now. Go ahead. What I was about to say, and, and I saw at least one driver fall victim to this, it's not just the entry into there that you got to worry about, Bill. This car has a fair bit of power, and if you try and get onto the gas a little too soon out of that hairpin, I found it's very easy to swing it around and pull a, a, a full 360. They work their way through 130R now into the Casio Triangle for the very first time. Osterkamp goes left, goes right, goes left. And now he's got it sorted out. And he's going to be the leader here for the first lap. Kessler, Herman, Hoyer, and Luke Barden. They race the same way that they gridded up. In fact, Ulsterkamp's putting a good stamp on this first lap. He's got almost a second over Kessler. Kessler, if anything, has got to worry about Herman behind him. Uh, not only is he threatening, but there's a train of cars. So if they start battling Bill, they uh, could find themselves losing more than just second. Well, let's talk about that train of cars. Let's look at sixth position. Go with car number 35, Kerry Nolden. We'll show you the back half of your top 10. Nolden, and then the newcomer, Alex Sadler. Sadler was really good in practice. He's sitting in seventh right now. Veteran Josh Thompson in eighth is being chased by Glenn Key. He's a newcomer, but he has been fast. Second last week in points. And then rounding out your top 10, the veteran Phil Reed, former champion. Oh, Reed almost gets into the back of Key. Let's stay on this battle right now with Reed looking to the inside here through Degner. 
uh, he got a good recovery, but I think with it being early in the race, he, he pulled out of it, just lifted, not wanting to try and risk the car, especially because Key had the inside or what would be the inside once they hit the, uh, the hairpin. So it's just not worth trying to pull a risky move going way down to the inside. Boy, passing really seems to be rough right now, Joe, as I have the timing and scoring screens are very quiet. Everybody just holding station. It, it can be kind of tough. These cars do get some arrow wash following each other. You can see you can follow close. I, I don't honestly chalk it up to what I was saying before as uh, Kerry Nolden actually trying to make a move on Luke Barton here. This is for fifth position. Oh, and they almost touched through 130R. They're lucky to get away with that. And as we look on that, I can report that Phil Reed was able to get the pass on Glenn Key through 130R as well. Although Phil doing a little bit of blinking for me. Our, our director confirms that. Sounds like the, we've got that replay spooled up for that wreck at the start. Do we want to take yeah, a look at that, Bill? Let's, let's go ahead and do that now while things are settling down. If the boys will behave, we'll take a look at that first lap incident. Let's see how this kicked off down into the hairpin. From what I can see, it looks to me like it started with... If I can scroll back to oh, it. We're back in the S's here. So we got a little ways to go on the replay. Yeah, I'm going to try and take a look myself to see exactly what happened there. There were so many cars involved. I, it definitely happened on the entry into it. At least it started to kick off and then other drivers just... It caused a big old checkup. You're going to see here that uh, uh, it, when that happens, it's just sort of a, a case of yeah. it's hard to predict what everybody's going to do, Bill. And uh, I, I think that's what everybody fell into. There you can see the pile up. The good news is most of those cars are still racing. Sara Dove has called it a day. Ah. Yuri Mojak and, and Erka Lindstrom are the three drivers not racing right now. Well, Osterkamp's certainly still racing, <laughs> and uh, he's now doubled what he had after the first lap. It's 1.6 seconds, Bill. And poor Kessler, uh, despite his, his uh, good points, uh, points day last week, he's whew, he hasn't been able to shake Herman or Hoyer. They are just right on top of him. Looking at those two yellow cars there, that's Sim RC and Sim RC oh, Retro that Hoyer Thompson's is Thompson's had a problem. And the Casio Triangle. He's gone around, and that was with contact, Bill, with Phil Reed. Thompson was, we got a replay of that one. Thompson was doing his best to work his way up through the grid. He was racing, he qualified in ninth, was racing back in about 13th. You're going to see they're side by side here, and then they just barely touched wheels, and poor Josh came out the worst of it. So Josh now falls all the way down to, well, for, uh, yeah, about 14th position now. Yeah, this is going to make it a tough climb for him, but we've seen Josh make comes comebacks before. I have no doubt that his speed will help right now, though he's very under attack from Dominic Gatermeyer and Matteo Coppola Neri, or Coppola, I believe we should say. Thompson, hopefully the car looking good as he's racing back there in in 15th position. Let's go ahead and talk about, we ran through 10. Let's go to 11th position. This is a guy who had a great run. This is car number 43, Connor Ryan, racing in 11th, just outside the top 10. Jason Plato following him. Then it's a little farther back to get to Charlie Summers. Wow. And, and I know you you always discount when someone doesn't qualify, but I mean, look at that, Bill. Yeah. We've only had how many laps here? Four, and he's gone from 32nd to 14th. This is a one great climb so far. Yeah. Go back to 14th, Dominic Gatermeyer, and then rounding out your 15th. Nice little battle here. This is where we saw Josh Thompson falls back to. In fact, Thompson's going to be overtaken by Matteo Coppola. There's Gatermeyer in 14th, and there we go back one spot here in a minute to Coppola. And there's Gatermeyer. 
behind them, uh, Ryan Walker had to get out of it behind Thompson, who was slow. Oh. And Thompson, and I think, might have in. a little bit of damage, yeah. But it's in the pit window because the rules are that you just have to make one stop. It's not a fuel stop, so the window is basically any time from the beginning to the next to the last lap. And that's been interesting, too, because we have had at least one car take a very early stop that I think is scheduled. That's Scott oh, Newton. Let's go to Hoyer. He spun it right now, racing in third place. He looped it around. Everybody got around him, but, boy, they got an eyeful of the Austrian driver. Oh, and this was driver error, Bill. Just went a little wide, coming into Dunlop here, just out of the S's. You're going to see him dip a wheel off into the grass. you got to be careful because the fastest guys are driving these cars right on edge, Bill. And when you lose that little bit of grip, it's not like the MX-5 where you can just keep your foot in it and you know and plow through. As soon as you touch it, you saw what happened. That car just whipped around on him. He did a good job of keeping it straight. Then he turned the wheel and let it roll off the track. Everybody gets around him, but uh, Manuel Hoyer now back to ninth. That's good news for the drivers who got that position. Nolden, Sadler, Barden, Reed, Key, they all vulture a spot. Well, this eases the pressure on Kessler because now instead of two cars fighting him for a second, he only has one. And Herman even actually has dropped off a little bit. Nevertheless, what a great day for those SimRC guys. One, two, and then the sister team in third. Boy, this is a this is a team to challenge Bushfink if you if you ask me yeah. here, Bill. They are they are Let, doing impressively. Let's go to Kerry Nolden in fourth right now, being under attack from Alex Sadler, the newcomer. And Sadler on the inside makes that pass. Let's move Alex up into fourth. He's got about two seconds to get up to Herman. Since he got the inside, I think Nolden made a little bit of a lift on the entry, kind of letting him in, thinking better of it. Uh, we're only 11 minutes into this race, so uh, you can see they've got relatively equal pace. I think he thinks that he could pay the favor back a little bit later if he gets a run as well. A little bit farther down, McRitchie's been making some moves. He just got around Joseph Ringrose. That gets him into 20th. Another one of those drivers didn't didn't put in a qualifying time, so he's got around some of those drivers in the back, was able to pick up some positions from the drivers that had trouble in the hairpin early on, and then pick some up on the track as well. Second and a half before he gets up to another good battle. Let's go up two positions. This is Tom Van Hoyman up here in 18th, being challenged by Daniel Morris. Ooh, Let's Morris these awful guys for close. a minute. I don't think Morris is going to try another hairpin. You can see just stays in line, setting him up. Now, this is where that run off the corner can really come in handy, but it doesn't look like Morris got a good one. Uh, as much as you don't want to risk looping the car around, you want to get a good launch. You can see here, even without it, he's going to pull up alongside. He's got the draft down to the inside of Spoon, and he's going to be given it by Hoyman. Another car. They're driving very polite here today, Bill. And what's interesting, just ahead of them for 16th, Valeteria Lander just got around uh, Ryan Walker in the very same spot. Now, Joe, as they head down into 130R, I'm going to guess that this corner may be not as scary with these cars with so much downforce. And it's it's <laughs> it's marginal. Uh, I mean, you can see it's, it's easily flat out for them, and they have some room for error. But if you go side by side, uh, you got to be very careful because if you touch wheels, you got to – you got to be pulling that wheel pretty hard to the left there so that you don't track out. And that can scrub on your tires, so don't do that too much. Uh, so I'd say doable, not advisable. Let's go ahead and look at our leader for a minute but because he just had his fastest lap. He's opened up a 2.3 second lead over Patrick Kessler. Of course, we're talking about Rene Osterkamp. Heading okay. down into the hairpin right now and and this is going to be exactly the sort of sort of drive he needed uh, as we talked about earlier this is effectively uh, going to give you what you would do if you did the double like we like to call yeah. it so uh, it's it's a much easier chance for him to gain a lot of points and not have to risk much so i think really the main things that Osterkamp needs to worry about uh, is traffic and himself just make sure and run his pace 
and uh, not get too distracted, not get too complacent, uh, because right now he's got this race very much under control, Bill. If we go about four spots back to Sadler and Nolden again, this is a battle for fourth. Remember, we saw Sadler make the pass, and now Nolden has not given up. Now he's got a pretty good run coming into 130. Oh, he's going to take a little peek. Think wiser of it. Uh, he knows it's a better opportunity to try and outbreak him into the triangle, and he's not going to do it here. But this goes back to what I mentioned before. These two pretty close on pace. I said at the top, Bill, this is a very fast track. And, and they do punch a decent hole in the air. So you can hold on to a faster car uh, if you can withstand the buffeting through some of the technical sections. Let's see what Nolan does in one. Got another run. Ooh, a little bit of a drift over there from Sadler. And they go side by side and Nolan gets it back. Yeah, that was a little bit too late. Uh, thankfully, uh, didn't do anything naughty there. As uh, as soon as Sadler saw that he was going to get a, up alongside, he went back to the racing line. Uh -huh. I think that's exactly what happened. I think he said, I think I'll try to cover it up a little late. Well, I'll give him room. So that's probably going to be swapping back and forth. If I was these guys, I'd maybe try and, especially now that he's passed him back, think, okay, we're just about dead even. Why don't we work together a little bit here? Maybe get on the radio, say, hey, you know, let's, let's try and slingshot. Let's go to 15th. This is a battle, and it is heating up. This We're looking at Matteo Coppola here. He is under attack from the Terry Lander is all over him. Watching the whole thing in the popcorn position, Ryan Walker. Look at the number 10 machine back there chasing. He is trying to find a way around, and he's been doing it for a couple laps. Ooh. Oh. I, I couldn't tell if that was a defensive move or if he lost traction there, did Mateo, but he, he went way to the inside, and Valtteri had the same idea, almost got into the back of him. Dead for 15th, yeah. Yeah, some, you can sometimes pass there. I really would not do it unless I was getting desperate and was trying to surprise somebody, which might be what Valtteri was trying to do, uh, but oof, that was that was awful, awful risky. We can afford to stay on this one for a little, little while longer because there's not a lot happening out there. And my spidey senses are tingling here that Coppola is going to want this spot. Let's see what kind of run he gets now coming out of Spoon. Okay, he's going to get that slipstream. That'll help him. Actually, I think... Oh, uh, no, we can stay with this. I thought we were going to have a pass for a second, but they stay in position. Two wide through 130R. And now Alander in the preferred position. He's first into the Casio Triangle. Give him that 15th spot. Nicely done. Uh, now, now that that's done, the thing that I saw was that uh, Herman got a great run on Kessler, but he lifted Bill. And now in the past, I, I really don't think we've seen team orders, especially there at the start, what we saw with Osterkamp and Kessler, because Kessler fought hard to take that lead away. Yeah. Uh, so I don't, I can't see uh, the, these Team RC guys having some sort of, uh, uh, you know, you must stay behind sort of thing. But there's definitely some cooperation happening. Well, I think maybe they are a little more polite to each other than they might be if they weren't teammates. It, it's early on, and there's still a pit stop to be made. This is true, and, and maybe that's what Herman is thinking. That's a great point, Bill. Uh, if... I don't know how much the leapfrog will work, especially with them being on the same team. Uh, but it's something, especially if you feel like you're stuck behind or you simply just don't want to uh, make an aggressive move to have to take it. Did Gattermeyer have a problem? I see him stopped. Oh, he's under the bridge. This must have been a problem with Degner, too. He actually took a toe, yep. Bill. Just a, just a self-spin all by himself. Degner 1 was fine. Oh, actually, no. Degner Wine, he, he, he goes a little wide, and I think he loses all of his rhythm. And then under the bridge, you'll see it here. Yeah, he takes the that inside curb a little too hard. The thing with that, Bill, we always talk about the curbs in these cars. Uh, they really don't like them sometimes. They can shake them up, even though you, you have to be aggressive in a few places. That is one where if you get too aggressive, you'll lose the rear end, and that's exactly what happened to Dominic. The rear just swung around. And that barrier is right there with that being an overpass. Looking at Daniel Morris now in that battle back there for 16th position. You have, really, it's a four-car battle. You have Coppola up there in 14th, Alander, Morris in 16th, and now joining him is Ryan Walker. Walker was watching, so Daniel Morris is working his way through these guys. 
And in fact, Morris started in 12th, so he's fallen back in this race and, and is trying to yeah. collect himself to get up. Wow, much better under braking than both Matteo and uh, Valtteri there. So he definitely has some pace and is not looking to sit and wait around, it looks like. It is such a different looking battle than what we saw from the guys up front, the leaders. This one is, is frantic. Alander is really working all over the place. Oh, uh, they're coming up to Luke Barton, who had a spin in a very unusual place. How did he do this? Yeah, he, he got it going again. Good day. He was racing in fifth. Oh, he took a big ride through the gravel. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. I think we found it. Luke Barton. He was having a great day. Qualified in fifth. Was racing well up the order. Puts him down to 13th. There you see just in the middle of it. And then once he comes back on, the car grips. And uh, he must have hit a bad bounce or something because the car just goes around. Yeah, let me correct myself. He was racing in ninth at the time of the spin, so he drops four positions. And you got to be careful with that, Bill. The underside of this car is relatively important, and you could damage the all-important front wing if you bound over the grass like that too hard. So, Let's uh, go to 14th again. Here's, here's this chaos going as Coppola making a move. Car number 10. Oh. And I think he's finally going to get it. No, I'm sorry, that's a launder getting it on Coppola. Yeah, you can see how much speed Matteo uh, basically scrubbed off taking that inside line, having to turn the wheel so much more. And wow, <laughs> Valtteri takes off like a shot after that pass. Yeah. He might have been he held up a little bit here. Yeah, I think it was a long time coming. Now, Daniel Morris would like some too. He has a run. I think he's going to get to the inside going into one. Let's see if he wants to challenge under braking. They're going to, oh my goodness, they got awfully close. Morris even locked him up. Great job by both cars, but aggressive stuff from Mateo. He's willing to give up one spot, but not two. Best battle on the track. I want to finish up a story. I jump you around, go to car number 35 in fourth position. This is Kerry Nolden. Remember, he got around Alex Sadler. Then after that, he's been able to open it up, and little by little, he is trying to get up with the other guys. That gap for Nolden to pick up 3.2 seconds to get up to uh, Stefan Herman. I tell you what, one driver, Bill, that's really had a golden ticket is Charlie Summers. He's all the way up to top 10 now. And we're, we're, not, we're not even halfway through this race. Yeah. I, I'm actually honestly stunned at that. That is impressive stuff. He's only 20 seconds behind the leaders. So Charlie's not only making uh, good moves to get through the field, he's holding good pace as well while he's doing it. And he's about, about to get to another. Get, about to get another. He's going to do that one easily. Zoom. Charlie Move has up to all the sweets. <laughs> Ooh, right, gotta... left, right through the Casio. Go ahead. Oh, oh, we had cars touching. Morris and, and Coppola were side by side again. They banged wheels coming up to 130R. They go side by side through there. Mateo on the inside once again. Going to be on the outside through the Casio chicane. And he's able to defend this one. Not but for I, long. Oh, yeah. Great run. Good job by Morris to try and set up that exit. That is smart driving. And look at the defensive oh. line. You can't be more defensive than that. Put on the reggae music. You're going to pass me. You're going to have to do it high. And now he drifts out wide to try to get the best entrance into one. They go Cialis bathtubs through one and two. And he holds it off Coppola with a great job. Woo. Walker takes a peek, but it, there's almost no passing there into three end of the S's. Long. Bill, oh, yeah. with them great banging run. wheels and good as job by Morris they to try and set. The gloves are off between these guys. My goodness. Yeah, happy to be done with that is Batari Alander, who has opened up a 2.7 second lead oh, we had a over tangle. those guys. Uh, Nick Stewart and uh, Thomas Edwards down into one and two. Oh, and this they fell victim to what we almost saw there in that battle uh, between uh, Coppola and, uh, and the other driver there. Yeah, and, and Morris, yeah, they got together. Once and twice, yeah. We'll look at it one more time. This is Edwards. These guys were racing well down the orders. Edwards and Nicholas Stewart. They were racing outside of the points. 
look at it one more time. I think we're going to get it right here. Yeah, this is where it gets set up, is onto the main straight. Ex almost the exact same situation, except they didn't go down to the inside. Uh, a little bit of a draft, and I, again, I gave the warning at the start of the broadcast, when you try and make a pass here into one, if you try to stay side by side, you are gambling, and these two uh, both didn't win, unfortunately. They hit once, and they came back together. House wins. Yeah. All this going on behind Renee Osterkamp, who is restoring order to this series. 3.8 seconds ahead of his teammate, who's opened up, Joe, a little bit of a gap now on Herman. Try as he might, Stefan trying to hang on the back of Patrick. I'm a little bit surprised by this. I wonder if maybe Kessler managed to uh, break the draft or if Herman made a mistake somewhere, maybe both, uh, that he's now that he's dropped him we're seeing the actual pace of these drivers and Herman's isn't much slower but just mildly slower potentially if this is the case because he's only about 1.3 seconds back but uh he's dropping we missed something as I cannot find Nolden Nolden was in fourth he's in eighth now yeah let's see let's... I'll, I'll go and investigate here okay you'll see if you can find it that's kind of Nolden's uh, modus operandi. He's fast, but boy, he can find trouble. Let's see. He was having a good run. So Sadler inherits fourth. Reed now fifth. Hoyer in sixth. Oh, it was out of the Casio chicane about three laps ago. Don't really need to go to a single car incident. Uh, another case of I think he took a little too much curb on the second apex, got the car hopping around, and he tried to apply the power, around she went. Yeah, he had been trying, we we documented, he was trying to leave Sadler behind and trying to run down Herman. Might have just been pushing a little hard. Good news is he's still out there, racing in the points. Yeah, but that's, that, that's a good opportunity thrown away. He was gaining positions as other drivers made mistakes, and then he himself made one. I, I talked about it, Bill. It's, it, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot with that, but it's a driver's track. Uh, you, you've got to be focused. You've got to be on point. There's a, a very narrow racing line through most of the circuit, and, and you've got to be hitting that. You've got to be in the groove. What it does is it sets up an interesting situation just as you're looking there at uh, Alexis Sorokin, just ahead of him is Charlie Summers. And remember, Charlie Summers has been working his way through the field. Well, now he's got a big name in front of him to see if he can run down Noldum. Uh, all you guys in Soup's uh, clipboard army, you little soldiers at home, why don't you mark this down? Interval 1.7 seconds between Nolden and Summers. We'll see if Charlie can close that gap. Ooh, and, and here's what makes it even more interesting here, Bill. Uh, Charlie Summers' fastest lap this race is a 54.7. Nolden's a 54.8. So they're very close on pace, but Summers yeah. is actually mildly faster. If you're if you're new to the series, uh, we'll tell you about Charlie Summers. He is really good. He's had some some gremlins in the past. He's got those put behind him now, and I think we're looking for him to have some good finishes the rest of the way. Now he's just got to qualify. Yeah, I'm I'm guessing. Only three laps. It's very easy to put a wheel off when you're pushing around here. He probably just all three laps either uh, had an off that discounted the laps or had an off and then wrecked it somewhere and, uh, you know, couldn't come out for his third lap. Because he was at the practice. He was here, and so it was the qualifying was there if he wanted it. Yeah, and this is not really a track you generally want to start from the back. Uh just again, because even though there are passing opportunities, it can be a little tough sometimes, especially if a driver makes it hard for you. Not that anybody seems to have today. Well, with everybody stretched out a little bit, let's go ahead and give some love to some of the drivers we maybe didn't talk about. Well, let's, let's go to 11th position. Yeah, this is a good one. Jason Plato, Connor Ryan, and Luke Barden in a nice three-car battle for I 11th. Think, I think Plato just took that spot. Uh, no, actually, I think he went off. Well, he's Correct in trouble me. right now because here comes Connor Ryan. Was weaving like a loom trying to find his way around the blue car of Plato. Yeah, if they had live stewards, Connor Ryan would definitely be on the radio right now. Is, could he lose a position to Barton? Yep. They'll run the outside of three. Beautiful stuff by Luke. Many yeah, like Luke. Nicknames, he, Bill. That, that's, that's, that was a cool hand Luke move right there. <laughs> He really took advantage of that one. 
Let's go. Yeah, we're going to look at it one more time. It was really fun. Maybe we could get a look at it from above. That would probably give you a real good look at how this... There's a great shot. Yeah, he saw the opportunity. He was brave and uh, just took advantage of it. I mean, the, plain and simple. Just had more guts. Now, the thing I was about to talk about is that Ryan probably might have been complaining a little bit because Jason Plato had the outside around 130R last time. They were side by side. And Plato dove way out into the paved runoff but kept the position. So I don't know how yeah. you feel about that, Bill, but I'm, I'm yeah. kind, of, kind of in the Martin Brundle camp where if you go off the track to keep a position, hand that thing over. Yeah, that's it. Well, Connor's back there saying, okay, Luke, you go take a shot at him now. See what you can do with Jason Plato. So Plato now opened up about eight-tenths of a second, but I think the pace, Joe, I think Barden and uh, Ryan both have the pace. We'll see if they can run them down. If they can behave themselves, Barton and, and Ryan, if they don't battle too much together. You know, we haven't paid attention to the pit stop since those those early laps, and I'm taking a look. Highest pitter right now, Scott Newton, uh, been out there for about 11 laps. So four laps into this race, he ducked in that 781, currently sitting in 20th. Oh, and he might have a friend soon because Charlie Summers just came in. We talked about Summers trying to run down Nolan. Well, maybe he's going to pass him this way. That would be the wise way, if you ask me. This is a good call. He's in and out. Where's Newton? Oh, Newton's way behind him. Yeah, out comfortably. Cycling, cycling out in about 15th position, 16th, as uh, Coppola goes by. Yeah, he's going to cycle out 17th, it looks like. After all is said and done, and he's got about a straightaway ahead of Newton, well clear of him, and now he has fresher tires, too. The good news is he didn't come out in this uh, battle for 10th here. Let's go up to Jason Plato again, because these guys, as we expected, Luke Barden ran him down. Let's we'll see what Barden can do with Plato. And Ryan's kind of stayed back a little bit, too. He's not staying up with this. Oh, oh, Barton getting way loose through the hairpin. Somehow doesn't lose too much time. Just eases back onto the throttle. Beautiful job by Luke. I have seen passes so far going down in the spoon. I think if Barton wants to force the issue, he can do it here. And he's going to do it. Down the inside. But is he too oh. hot? Uh, over under there for Plato. Nice move, but now he's going to give the draft right back. Having the best seat in the house is Connor Ryan watching it. Now on the preferred position, it's going to be Barton. He's going to be first to the Casio Triangle. Not sure if he's going to be first out of it. Yes, I think so. Oh, and going a little wide is Ryan. Ryan's got to get it sorted out. I think he's finally got the job done, at least for here. Question is, can he get the launch? Beautiful launch. Barton is off like a shot. Ryan wants no part of this. He's coming he's, in. Yeah, he's going to pit. Now, our, our viewers who are, are over in the UK, uh, that is not Jason Plato of uh, touring car fame. Different Jason Plato here on iRacing. What are the odds of that, huh? I'm sure he gets asked that a lot. Yeah. Okay, now this is interesting. Nolden is in. And he's leaving right now. The question is, where is Summers? Summers, oh, he's going to get him. Ooh, very, very close. No, no Nolden out. out ahead Summers of him. Summers behind him, yeah. But he's got two cars in front of him now. Nolden has Walker and Coppola. We talked about the, getting in that mix. So now Nolden's going to really have to hustle to get around these guys. No blue flag for Walker. Molden is our highest pitter, but this is always the risk you run. Not waiting to go long here. He's now could potentially be stuck by Walker. It depends on what kind of mood Ryan's in right now. Yeah. Poor, poor Kerry Nolden doesn't know what he's getting involved for here when he gets up to Ryan and, and uh, Walker and Coppola. Walker's definitely not pulling off to the side. Let's see what happens here on the stretch. If he goes defensive, then I, I think Walker is feeling feisty. Molden's got a good run. He's got the slipstream. We're right on board looking down off that gearbox. And as we switch to the TV cams, ooh, Nolden is actually the one not brave enough to try and stick his nose in. 
and Summers keeps coming. All right, Phil Reed pits from sixth position. As we stay on this battle, oh, and switched over to Reed. Looks like Nolden's got a good run. He's going to have the inside into 130R. Yep, he's got him easily. He that one. That's good news for him, bad news for Charlie Summers. Reed is just taking off right now. Walker's coming up the straight. I think Reed's got him easy. Yeah, Reed should be comfortably ahead of his teammate, Nolden. Coppola decides to pit. That's good news for, for, uh, for Nolden, as he won't have to deal with him. Most everybody's stringing out, Bill. The only battle I'm seeing on track is Hoyman, Van Hoyman and Pierce. Well, they're actually side by side in the one right now. Van Hoyman has the inside, and he is going to get by Connor Ryan. Excuse me, Pierce. Ryan sitting behind them at the moment. Oh, I heard contact somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. It might have been in pit lane. Maybe somebody just having a little bit of a rage. I don't see anybody slow. Yeah, big crash. I don't see big anything crash in, Big crash in my, in my earphones, but sometimes that happens on pit lane. Leader is in. All right. Ostercamp's really not under threat of getting leapfrogged Kessler by anybody. Herman's going to stay out and lead a lap. You don't get a point for leading a lap, but you do get a little screen time. Here comes the two SimRC drivers. So he's going to have the lead at least for one lap. So take a picture. It'll last longer. There you go. No, but nobody except 80s children are going to know what in the world I'm referencing there on that one. <laughs> Ostercamp is out. Now, where does he come out in? Is he going to come out into any trouble? I don't think so. Cycling out in fifth position. Clear and track and nobody him. around. Oh, he he timed that one to perfection. I always wonder about that, Bill. How many of these drivers actually try and pay attention to that and see if they can get a gap somewhere or no? When they race at this level, these guys being the fastest, you know, they're always looking for every little tenth. So, uh, he, I don't know. I, I'd love to ask him that after the race if he comes and talks to us. Osterkamp and Kessler, both uh, similar lap, uh, pit stop times, about, about 31 seconds cone to cone. Now, Luke Barden is between those two drivers in six, but he still needs to make his stop. Yeah, we've got, let's see, four, five, six of the top ten that yet need to come in. They can go as long as they want. But it's a matter of, of, of fuel. How much, how much fuel do you want to put in at the very beginning? I, I think what they like to do is figure out how much fuel can I take while I change two tires. Make the car as light as possible. Let's go back to battle here for 14. This is, uh, Joe was talking about it, Tom Van Hoyman. He's trying to run up on Connor Ryan. Then there's Pierce and Newton back there. Now, how many of those drivers have taken their stops and how many haven't? Ryan, Ryan has taken a stop. The rest of those guys, and, and Newton has. So Newton would like to get this done. He's and he's going to get around Pierce. Yes! Newton gets around Pierce for 15th. Uh, Pierce is going to get there a good launch it. and a slipstream. Let's see if he tries to get it back. He's pulling up to him. He does. Defensive move by Newton. And he's going to lift. He's just going to let this one go. Now, while we were watching this, uh, Herman did come in and stop and is back out. And actually... Whoa! Oh, he's, he's had a Kessler. Kessler! Oh! He snaked him. Interesting. Wonder if that was traffic or just better pace or what? Well, he was about eight tenths of a second faster in the box and about a half second faster cone to cone. I don't think it was all pit stop. It could have been. It could have been Kessler's just not having good in and out. Oh, and a spin from Herman. He loses it. 
all that hard work he had managed to get by, and that same spot from before coming through Degner 2. This time, though, he didn't take too much curb. In fact, he was well off of it, but still lost the rear of the car. Just a little half spin. He got it straightened out, but lost a ton of time to Kessler now. Great news for Herman is that next car down, Phil Reed, is all five and a half seconds back. So despite losing some time, he isn't really under threat due to that error. So our contracts calls for us to put the camera on the current leader, and it is newcomer Alex Sadler. Yep, he gets one lap led since he stays out here. Last time around, he was just behind Herman. And Len he Key is also yet to stop, and Alexei Sorokin. He can stay out there for as long as he wants. This has to pit before the last lap. So Joe talked about it. Sadler, he's got about six and a half seconds on Glenn Key. This is what the pit stops tend to do in every bit, every form of racing that you see uh, when they have green flag stops. It, it the, the field tends to thin out a little bit. Everybody gets separated. Good job from Joseph Ringrose getting out of the way of the leader. Joseph now, racing in 24th position. I believe Luke Barton just overtook Connor Ryan. That's going to bump him up to 11th. He's still trying to chase down Charlie Summers, but he's a whole 15 seconds back of him. Every battle you're going to look at now are from drivers that have made their pit stops, unless it includes Daniel Morris. Morris still needs to come in. Of course, the top three have not pitted yet, but there's really not much of a battle going on up there. Yeah, one of the last cars in the midfield to take his stop is Jordan Pierce. He just did, and looks like I think he's going to return in 21st. Oh, 22nd, actually. And once again, we're, we're left with this situation where where is Kerry Nolden? Kerry Nolden was, of course, racing ahead of Charlie Summers, but now Nolden is missing again as he had some more problems. Yeah, he's exited out. Did we miss something with Nolden? Yeah. He's sneaky, at least. He's got to be happy that we're not catching all of his mistakes. I'm going to go and look and see what exactly happened to him, yeah. because he was a major player here. He certainly and, was. Uh, that's not... That's highly unusual that he disappeared without us taking notice. I now we're looking the lap. I'm just trying to figure out what he did. Well, that's going on. We're looking at a nice battle on here. This is Luke Barton and Connor Ryan. Remember oh. These? What'd you find, Joe? Uh, it was into Degner 2. He just essentially went a little wide in Degner 1 and with less grip out on that AstroTurf, he locked him up, he speared it straight nose into the barriers and that was his day done. And with no sprint race to follow, it is indeed his day done. Sorry to interrupt you there, Bill. No, Looks like Ryan and Barton having a nice little tussle here for 11th. Barton may have gotten by him, but Ryan's holding on. What they have done, just to get the big picture, they've left uh, Matteo Coppola behind. Let's go, to, let's go to 16th right now. Coppola in a battle. This is a tight one. With, oh, it's with Walker. Ooh, way too much curb on the inside for Matteo. He had to get out of the gas and finally gets back into it but he lost a lot of time that went from about two tenths up to 1.2 i'm going to jump you around again car number 147 a driver we have not heard much from evan emre this is a nice battle for 17th working on jason plato emre been really quiet started in 18th racing in 18th is there such a thing as a as a quiet scott <laughs> our leader comes in Alex Sadler making a stop. Big error through Degner, too, as we were riding on board with Jason there, and that's allowed Emre to get right up behind him. 
Doesn't make a move into the hairpin. Let's see if he sets himself up for a launch here. Stay on that. I can just report that Kessler goes by Sadler. Herman goes by Sadler. Sadler's going to cycle out. Racing six right now. Fourth, really, of the cars that have pitted. Not enough of a draft to give an opportunity for Evan. Ooh, takes it in very hard through the second apex of Spoon. I thought that was going to give him a great run, but unfortunately, he's just out of arm's length. Joe, the six even a race certainly gives us as commentators and directors a chance to get through the field a little bit more than those frantic 40-minute features. <laughs> or the sprint, for that matter. Or the sprint. Yeah, well, the sprints are, are chaotic. Ooh, this is the closest we've seen Emre. Is he going to get an opportunity? Oh, just every single time, he doesn't seem to quite be able to get on the gas soon enough because he wants to be maybe like five feet closer than this, and he would start to close on Plato and get a good chance. But you can see he's, he's not even getting up alongside him for turn one. So Emre's really got to work on his, his corner exits here to give himself the chance. This is a battle for points. It pays down to 20, so these guys looking at a handful of points between them. And I tell you what, the attrition's been pretty heavy out here, uh, Bill, because we've got 24 cars, I believe, still out there. So only four people won't get points. There's good incentive to just keep it going. Yeah. Still waiting for three cars to make their spit. The pit stops, the two leaders, Glenn Key and Alexi Sorokin, and then Daniel Morris, who is currently in ninth. And Morris is going to come in right now, so that only leaves the two leaders. Yeah, Osterkamp, actually, he's going to take second on track even, because yeah. he's within half a second of Sorokin. Clint Key a little ways up. I don't think that Osterkamp's going to get him before Key has to pit. Now, I believe you said, Bill, that they can't go to the final lap and try and cross the line. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought it. of. Yeah, <laughs> can't pull a Schumacher. Come in, take, do my pit stop, and then go 12 feet across the line to get the win. No. This will be a fun battle, though, for second. Let's go ahead and look at this. So there's Ostercamp. I'm curious what Alexi's going to do here. I, it probably isn't in, in his favor to try and hold him up because really all it's going to do is slow him down. It, it's yeah. highly unlikely that he's going to, you know, give himself an opportunity to gain a position by holding Renee up. If anything, let him go by and then hang on to his coattails. Absolutely, Maybe yeah. Some speed that way. Because Sorokin is, is fast enough to, to probably be able to do that. He's a, certainly a quality driver. And, and Rene really doesn't have to push this either. The next car down, seven and a half seconds. He's already pitted. That's that's Patrick Kessler. And Glenn Key, obviously he's not racing him because Key's not going to jump him if he waits okay. up. And the problem's going to be solved right here. So that releases Osterkamp, and Key's in, too. He is in as well. So let's see the guys go by now. Going by with those guys is... Kessler goes by. Sadler's through. Reed's through. Hoyer's coming down the pit straight. And Key is out in a very good position. He comes out in six. Great job. Just ahead of Manuel two spots Hoyer from, from the start. So they're there again, Key and Hoyer in those positive sim racing green guys. They had that great performance last time out of Phillip Island where they dominated the field. Not going to be quite as strong today. Nevertheless, a good points day. Is is that uh, PSR positive? Green. Is that uh, PSR Verde or is that PSR Emerald, Bill? Yeah, you know what? And what makes it worse? <laughs> I'm, I don't get me on my soapbox here. But, but there are two teams that have chosen orange as their color. That's Come on. That's just not right. AOR Orange and Positive Sim Racing Orange, I believe. I, I'm really impressed with Key. Like I said, uh, started eighth. 
up to six. If he can fend off Hoyer, this is this is a very good result for Glenn. What's interesting is in fifth position is Phil Reed, and I think they got a shot maybe to get to him. They're, they can see him. That's a good point. Uh, after all is said and done, again, we've had nearly 50 minutes of racing, and he's still on his tail. All he has to do is just find a, a little bit of pace here with one and a half second. You know, if he's two tenths faster per lap, that gives him plenty of laps to try and uh, get by him. Well, before that heats up, let's go ahead and run through the top 20 real quick. Uh, nah, let's, I, let's not leave this one yet. Let's stay on Hoyer and Key. I got a hunch Key is going to make this pass. We don't want to miss it. Yeah, he uh, Hoyer is well within range here. But again, teammates, it is towards the end of the race. So this is the point where maybe they... The leash is off a little bit. You can get a little more aggressive. He's going to look to the inside, down into turn one. How hard is Key going to fight it? Wow. He's not going to fight it at all. Yeah, Hoyer gets on in there and makes the pass. That was not a that was not a uh, a dance step there. That was he made him work for it. Although he didn't fight him, but he made him drive it in deep. Remember how we were covering M Ray down uh, in 18th, trying to chase down Plato. Something must have happened because he's not only eight seconds behind, now he's got Lubomir Morris trying to threaten for that spot. And even though this is farther down, you mentioned, oh, he's got a good run. Yep. Gonna have to go the long way around. M Ray defends. Early breaking from Morris, maybe setting himself up for the corner exit. And it looks like a decent launch. Oh, he's got a toe now. Watch the defensive line from Roland Thunder. Again, there's no room to go to the right. All right, he so backed he out. Around the outside. He backed out on the last time around. He does it this time. Holds it around the outside, but it's a shorter line through that first part of the corner. So Emre fends him off for now. But we were talking about, Bill, that the points go down to 20th. Again, this is for 18th. So... Even though this is farther down in the field, this is for higher points uh, now that Lubomir has gotten by it or is, or is trying to get by him. An interesting dynamic of the track is that wall to the right hand side. There's no white line that they have to worry about trying to defend to, and then the guy going underneath you. You can take it right down to the wall. There's no oh, room yeah. for them to go under you. And we've seen a few guys do that, uh, that uh, they take it all the way to the extreme because they're afraid that the driver is going to try and get that inside and that's because of that turn one build it's it's so important to have the inside into that corner even lubomir though he was almost past him couldn't make it a stick let's jump we're going to leave this one i got one that's even more exciting up a few spots in 16th position coppola who's really been the star of the show remember plato we were talking about plato was working with emory well he's left him behind now he's working on coppola just got loose and lost a ton of time coppola star i, I see what you did there bill <laughs> Yeah, uh, these uh, these guys certainly are about to get in it. Plato doing a good job trying to come forward here late in the race. Not only has he shaken Emre, now he's looking at gaining one more spot. Oh, a little too much curb on the first part there for Coppola. You can see how much it hurt him because now Plato is all over that gearbox. Defensive line right on the wall like we talked about. is going to make him do it on the outside. All right. Are the gods going to be smiling on Plato? He's going to try it. Wow. wow, brave stuff, and he gets it done. Wasn't sure if he's going to get a vote up from that wide angle in there, but he does move him up to 16th, Coppola in 17th. Let's go to Imre. Drop back. This is close. Imre and Morris. Oh. <laughs> Great fight going on in the back. Oh boy, M. Ray is not going to give this one up easily twice now. He's fending him off. Yeah, I think you talk cork in the bottle. I think it's M. Ray right now because it's Morris. And here comes Tom Van Hoyman as well in 20th. The battle for the final points paying positions. Yeah, this will be great for Hoyman because it'll be two for one if these two tangle. Talk about that popcorn position. Tom just really kind of egging them on from back there. 
we can stay on this. Nothing going up in front. I can report that Reed is able to hold off Hoyer. Manuel not able to make up any time. All the excitement's in the back. Yeah, and, and Key hasn't been able to get past Hoyer after nope. Hoyer overtook him either. So, At least not yet. Seven minutes of racing to go. I think Key still has something up his sleeve. Boy, things staying very tight between M. Ray and Morris. So we watch them head up. Oh, great run here from Morris. Again, being forced to go the long way around into the chicane. This time he holds it for part of it. Loses the second apex. And M. Ray, I said he had to work on those corner exits. This time he gets a fantastic run. And Back all that nonsense has opened the door for Van Hoyman here. Licking his chops, going to try and pull the move on him the long way around. Oh, this is looking very good so far. It's going to switch back into three if he could just keep the momentum up. He starts to lose ground. Yeah. Ugh. He was in there, held it for one, almost held it for two, then he had to give it up. And poor Morris, look at, look at all of the ground that he lost in that battle. He's now 1.3 behind Emray. Like you said, five minutes to go. He's He's got to start putting the afterburners on to get back up to that 147. We don't need to go there, but Kessler and Herman for second. Remember, Herman was out in front and he lost it on a half spin. Slowly beginning to run Kessler and might have something for him here before we're done. This is the best battle going on, though, in the back. Really is. Everybody's starting to separate apart even Key losing ground on Hoyer as uh, Morris goes from offense to defense. Van Hoyman not close enough up to Spoon. And the, right. the, the reason that this is important uh, that I bring that up, Bill, is because some drivers are much better being the follower uh, than they are being the defender. So... We're going to have to see if Morris is good on both ways or if uh, he's better attacking than he is defending. And to be honest, it's a little different dynamic when you're racing with guys back in the... Here comes the move. Ooh, he's way hot into that corner. Somehow he finds the second apex. Wow, I thought for sure that Lubomir overshot that. Just to finish my point, the guys up front all know where they're racing. They all know where the breaking points are. That's why they're fast. They all do it pretty much the same way. When you start racing with guys that aren't quite, don't have the same technique, yeah, breaking points are a little different from driver to driver, and where we go for the apexes aren't quite the same. It's a little more chaotic back here in the back. Well, and, and that comes back to practice. Uh, it's not just a good idea to try and practice the regular racing line. You got to be practicing offline. Pick markers for those even. Try and figure out how deep you can take it. Uh, because, again, you're going to be that much harder to pass if you can maximize it when you're taking it from a shallow angle or things like that. Uh, the, if the other guy hasn't practiced that, then you're going to be uh, just a rolling roadblock. Well, as, especially with, with guys with, with just under four minutes of racing to go, sometimes we get punted, back monitors, we get punted by the fast guys, and they complain, well, you broke so early. Well, that's my breaking zone. That's why I am a back marker. That's, that's where I break. You got to know that. Always give some room, yeah. Or, or keep your nose out, because uh, yeah. in case they do break early. There's well, hey, our we, leader. I was going to say, we have, we have a leader to this race, Bill. Yeah, this is a... I've said it before, but order has been restored. Enough of that nonsense that happened down in Australia. 8.5 seconds. And this this is demoralizing for, yeah. for Kessler because we've seen him much closer in the races in the past. This one just really hasn't had it for Osterkamp. I'm not sure what's different. Uh, with this being such a driver's track, maybe Osterkamp likes this one and Kessler doesn't. We'll have to ask after the race to see really what the difference was. Usually you have pretty similar setups uh although drivers try to individualize them uh, since this is open setup and that could maybe make a little bit of a difference i don't know about eight and a half seconds though we do have something to look at let's drop back about three spots back to phil reed and fifth remember we documented this we thought that hoyer might have something for reed well he's getting closer 
It's now a second. We thought that maybe Glenn Key might have something for Hoyer. That doesn't seem to be the case. You know, and this, this could be down to fuel as well, since the fuel is open. Uh, they can cut it pretty close. Maybe Hoyer was just kind of controlling his pace until he was sure that he could get to the end, since he maybe he felt he cut it too close. And that could be what's causing the increase in pace. Or the reverse. Maybe Reed is slowing because he thinks he's tight on fuel. That gap now under, well, you can see the, the, you can read the number yourself, viewers, 8.8, that's what, or 0.883. We read the number better than I can say it. <laughs> yeah, just Remember holding Reed, on to the back of him. Go ahead. Reed racing for AOR Orange. His teammate, Kerry Nolden, was having such a good run. They looked to be having oh. a good point. Day. Oh, who's off in that front? Was that was Sadler. That's Alex her Sadler. position. That was he all by himself. By. He was in fourth. And the second apex of the S's, the car just came around. Oh, my goodness. He had, oh, done, a 30, he had done it 30 times before flawlessly, and the 31st time gets him. Yeah, Boy, see, Glenn, Glenn Key, watch Key just sneak by here. Maybe not from that angle watching it. The rear was coming around a little bit even before he got the curb, so I don't know. Maybe he was a little too aggressive and tried to get on the brakes a little mid-corner and that looped it around. Hard to tell, but not not usually a spot where you see a driver, especially of his caliber, uh, break loose. Well, Sadler new to the series, and sometimes that's the, that's the dues you have to pay. These drivers, they don't want to come in here and get yourself a podium. Indeed. Not related to Elliot, is he? No, we would just uh, UK and I, so and I were talking I, about yep. it. <laughs> or Hermes or Hermes Sadler for that matter. Or Craig Sadler the golfer. There, I'm out of him now. <laughs> Adam? Oh, it's it's Sadler. Okay. Uh Ostercamp takes the white flag. And all he has to do from here, Bill, is cruise the finish. Nobody in front of him. He should have a peaceful drive here in the Japanese tundra. He deserves some screen time after the race that he's run. Haven't seen any incidents. Haven't seen any major errors. He fended off his teammate at the start. It's It's been a very Vettel-esque race for, for Rene. And honestly... Pretty much everything else has settled down, all those battles we were looking at. Once he crosses line, we may want to check in on M. Ray Morris and, and Hoyman. They're, ben Hoyman, they're still working together there. Is it just me or is Reed blinking a lot? Yeah, he has been. Reed has been blinking for most of the race. Fortunately, he hasn't been racing around anybody. And if I know Phil Reed, he's probably that good that he was managed to keep himself away from people. Here we see Ostercamp out of Spoon. From here, Bill, he only has to break one more time, even though it's about four corners to go. He's home free. It was a six-point interval between him and his teammate for first place. I believe with this win and the bonus points, Rene Ostercamp has probably put himself back up at the top of the point standings. But right now, all he's worried about is negotiating Casio Triangle out of the final corner. Round number five in the AOR Formula Renault 2.0 Championships. Going to go to Rene Ostercamp. Kessler coming across comfortably ahead of of uh, Herman. That's a, I, I wouldn't be comfortable <laughs> if it was me. Let's go back to Emory in 17th now. This is the best battle. Everyone else should finish in order. This is Emory trying to hold off Morris. Van Hoyman not able to get there. They've got quite a lap yet to go since they were almost a lap down at the end. And they got Mr. Excitement ahead of Matteo Coppola. And don't forget, uh, Van Hoyman could still get a position if these two tangle. You gotta be careful. This I really credit goes to Emre 
the way that he's driven oh. the end of this race and, and, and wins out of it now. This, this just, just spun it, but he's going to be okay. Our timing scoring is a little bit off here on the last lap. I believe these guys are actually racing for 18th and 19th. You may see a different number on your screen. Yep. Emery coming now. Here comes the fight. Uh, to the outside. Emery's held him off before. Nicely done. He's going to hold on to that. And they come across. Imre is going to get credited. Let's give the official thing. I think it's going like. to be 18th position and 19th for Morris. Van Hoyman able to hold on to get that Single final point. points paying position. Well, that was a fun one. The racing's over here in Japan, but stick around. Our broadcast isn't done. We'll come back to run down the entire finishing order. Talk to some of the drivers before we put a lock on the gate. No sprint race today, boys and girls. Be back in a second. Sponsored by the, well, sanctioned by the Apex Online Racing. 
This is the Formula Renault 2.0 Season 10 Championship brought to you by the Global Sim Racing Channel. Round number five is in the books, a single race event, a one-hour uh, longer race for these guys. Not really a, a endurance race, but let's give you the final finishing order here. And it was Rene, uh, Rene Osterkamp. Didn't go wire to wire. Some drivers went a little longer before they pitted. But Osterkamp gets the win. His partner, Patrick Kessler, going to come home in second of home ahead of Stefan Herman. Phil Reed was able to hold off Manuel Hoyer for fourth. Hoyer has to settle for fifth ahead of his teammate, Glenn Key. Alex Sadler had that spin at the very end. He has to drop back into seventh position. Charlie Summers had a nice race from 32nd all the way up into eighth. Alexi Sorokin in the ninth position, rounding out your top 10, Luke Barton. In 11th, it was Scott Newton who came up four spots, followed by Connor Ryan sitting there in 12th at the end. Valtteri Alander went from 34th to 13th, but he did not put a qualifying time in. Uh, Daniel Morris gets a 14th with Jason Plato finishing in the 15th spot. Only managed to get one position over that whole race. Ryan Walker finishes in 16th, a great climb for him. He got nine spots from the green. Matteo Coppola finishes in 17th spot with Evan Emre coming home in 18th and Lubomir Morris 19th. The last points paying position goes to Tom Van Hoyman, who sadly did not get a chance to take another spot on the last lap as he had a spin on the way home. Just out of the points, it's Jordan Pierce, but he can take solace in knowing that he was on the lead lap, the last car to do so. Then we get to the cars that were one lap down, and that was Adam Hedgecock, then all the guys that ran into trouble. Joseph Ringrose, David Boitlar, Kerry Nolden. We talked about him. Boy, he was racing up front. Started sixth. Another no points day for Nolden. Thomas Edwards in 26th position, 27th, 28th, and 29th goes to Nicholas Stewart, John Roberts, and Josh Thompson. Thompson qualified ninth. His day ended early. He's got a win under his belt, Dominic. Get a Meyer, but he couldn't get any points today, finishing in 30th. Then the final four drivers here. It's James McRitchie, Ali Hay, Jerry Mojack, Erka Lindstrom, and Sara Dove got caught with most of those drivers getting caught up in that lap one incident. Joe, do we have anybody for interviews? Well, uh, I believe it looks like we have, uh, is Herman the first one up there? Nope. Trying to see who our highest finisher is. I would guess what have we don't <laughs> I don't think any of the top guys want to come in and talk to us here. Well, let's go ahead and talk to uh Ryan Walker, I guess. Ryan was at least Ryan, you're on you you got soup here. You had an exciting race. You finished down the order in, in 16th position, but wasn't for lack of trying. Boy, you battled for most of the race. Had somebody to race with, huh? Yeah, that was that was pretty intense, but good fun. Uh yeah. There was always there was always someone to battle and uh yeah it was especially good fun against my against my teammate mr plato at the end so yeah uh quite happy to finish in p16 and collect some more points uh i'm not sure where i finished in the in the the rookie championship but hopefully i think i finished in first or second so yeah uh, good haul of points uh, this evening and yeah i'm quite happy with that so what is your pit stop strategy being back there racing outside the top 10? Uh, do you know what you're going to do ahead of time, or do you just kind of play it and see how it works out? Uh, I was, I was <laughs> excuse me. I was discussing that with my teammates uh, in practice, and I was trying to decide, or I was asking them, what would be the best strategy to go with, uh, go with, go with a full tank of fuel and go as long as possible, or start with maybe half a tank and maybe try try putting early and save some time by not having to put in, put in as much fuel. But yeah, I decided to uh, take half a tank and pit round about, uh, I can't remember where, when I pitted, but just when I pitted, just put in the, the necessary fuel I needed to get to the end and thankfully it paid off. You don't, you put in enough fuel that when the second, when your pit stop comes, you don't actually have to wait for the fuel. You get the tires done and then you go. Yeah, exactly. Well, it worked out well for you. You got yourself some points. You put on a good show, racing with your teammate. Congratulations. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, Sid. Ryan Walker, 16th today. Give a handful of points. Where are we going now, boys? 
believe we are doing uh, Scott Newton up next and talking to him about how his race went getting in 11th. The main thing that sticks out to me for Scott is looking at his lap times. Scott, that's some phenomenal consistency, everything within a second for the vast majority of the race. Yeah, hi, Joe. Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad um, in terms of consistency, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, the contact on, I think it was lap three with Daniel, uh, I think he just lost the car and uh, tried jumping out the way, but um, yeah, just the back end of his car was in the middle of the track and yeah, just caught the front wing on that, so I had to pit early uh, than planned. And yeah, running 35 plus liters in the tank at that early part of the race wasn't fun. So I just knew I had to put in the the, uh, the consistent laps and I knew that I would gain places just through consistency and luckily I managed to pick up, I think uh, I was at four by the end of the race. But uh, pretty amazing overtake on uh, Ryan to boot, uh, O'Connor as well to boot. So yeah, pretty happy. Yeah, and speaking of that pit strategy, you uh, obviously it sounds like you'd plan to pit later if you could have. Uh, do you think that that uh, strategy, whichever you were going to go for, would have been more optimal, or was it pretty much a toss-up on when you pitted? Uh, yeah, I would probably would have pitted about 35 minutes in, um, pretty much roughly when everyone else was going to do so. So, yeah, ultimately... Like, even though 10, 10 or 12 letters might not sound much, but uh, just in terms of uh, consistency for myself, I think that the lighter car is obviously quicker. So, um, yeah, it would have been better to pit later. But also you've got to watch out for the tyre life as well because uh, it was at 55 minutes on a, on that set, that set of tyres um, pretty much. Um, like the tyres were consistent throughout the whole run. I'm actually surprised that I got my fastest lap on the third to last lap. So, uh, yeah, the tire wear doesn't seem to be an issue. It's just as long as you don't overheat them. Yeah, it was a relatively cool track, so definitely helped those conditions, uh, help the uh, ability to try and get some fast times in. Well, commiserations that it wasn't better than you would have liked. Still four positions up from the start and uh, some good points for today. No worries. Cheers for that, Joe. That's Scott Newton. Their 11th place finisher just outside the top 10, I believe. Bill, have you caught up with Manuel Hoyer? Fifth place finisher, yes, indeed. Manuel, this is going to sound like a, oh, a backhanded compliment. Fifth place, certainly great. Why so dominant at Phillip Island and then here at uh, Suzuka, not as much so? Is it just you love the track or how's that work out? Um, to be honest, uh, at Phillip Island, uh, Glenn and I were also surprised to to be so fast there um, and we were working hard to to be able to repeat it uh, here in Suzuka but uh, yes MRC was too too strong for us and, when go ahead and I just can say uh, um, that the, my full respect <laughs> to these two guys <laughs> really <laughs> They are something else, aren't they? Let me ask you about your teammate, Glenn Key. Did you know each other beforehand, before you teamed up? Because you race both so close together. You have such similar speed. Uh, we, we met the first time uh, before uh, the last season, season nine. Uh, there we get up to be teammate uh, before we, we never met. And this season, uh, Glenn became so fast. Really, he he closing up to the top five, and it's pushing me also very hard to to get better to to to, to be able to stay with him. Uh, but yeah, um, I think uh, he's he's not done yet, and he will get <laughs> faster <laughs> than, than me. Yeah, we th we think so too. We think he's coming. Do you share setups? Uh, do you race the same setup, or are you guys just on your own? Yeah, at the beginning uh, we we drive this the same base, um, and then we we go uh, another way. So uh, Glenn had another driving style than I, 
And so Glenn maybe is not feeling not comfortable with my setup and I don't feel comfortable with uh, Glenn's setup. So uh, at Phillip Island, the only thing that was uh, the same were the wings. And here I think everything was different. <laughs> well, you're, you, a great race, a great points day for positive sim racing green. Not as good as these sim RC guys, but you can't have that kind of performance every week. Good job. Good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye. Daniel Hoyer, I think he sees the writing on the wall as Glenn Clee is, a, is an up-and-comer. Who we got? Uh, that's, I think that's it, Bill. Oh, that's it. Well, that was fun to do. And it was nice to hear from Manuel Hoyer. All right. Well, with that said, we're going to close up shop here. So let's go ahead and give thanks to the people that make this possible. And that's, of course, everybody at the Apex Online Racing for organizing this series and choosing GSRC as their broadcasting company. We'd like to thank all the members who support the broadcast. We know you have a lot of choices when you fly. Thanks for flying GSRC. How about the companies and equipment and software that you see on the screen right now that we use for this production and the original music that gives every GSRC production that unique flavor and feel? Well, that's thanks to Eric Eckholm and June Lalonde. See the screen to how to contact each of them. The AOR will return in one week. That'll be Friday, uh, July 20th at Road Atlanta. Uh, it's a very popular course, very fun in these cars. We'll be back again for full coverage, and we look forward to you joining us. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including a complete list of future broadcasts, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. We're also on Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and on Instagram at GSRC underscore Gram. Finally, on behalf of the man whose voice you just heard, who made my job so easy, Joe Peak, our director, Sean Crackers Ambrose. Sean, don't be jealous. While I was working with Joe, I was thinking of you. And our camera artist, Dougie Beard. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.